Filters, Single Screw Compressor, The Inside Story. In the mid-1980s, Vilter decided to build its own screw compressor and became a licensee to fabricate both twin and single screw compressors. In evaluating both technologies, many inherent benefits of the single screw were recognized. Thus, Vilter decided to produce single screw compressors. To this date, with thousands of compressors operating in the field, Vilter's team members are confident that they made the right choice in screw compressor technologies. A single screw compressor unit is comprised of typical components including an oil separator, lubrication pump and piping, an oil cooler, oil filter, microcontroller, suction stop check valve strainer assembly, a motor whose shaft is connected by a coupling to a compressor. This presentation focuses on the compressor. Looking through the side access cover at the core of the single screw compressor is a single main rotor. Let's take a look at the compressor from the other side. By removing the front housing, the motor coupling, the suction inlet on the top, and the two side access covers, we see the bare frame of the compressor. Removing the pair of capacity slide valves, the pair of volume ratio slide valves, the two stargate rotors, and sliding back the casing, we reveal the heart of the compressor. The main rotor of the single screw compressor is a simple cylinder with a shaft through it. There are six threads or grooves or flutes cut in the cylinder. Each flute is opened at one end of the cylinder, diminishing to zero volume out the side of the cylinder before reaching the opposite end. The opened end of the grooves allows low pressure suction gas to fill the flutes. In operation, each flute becomes a compression chamber. Looking down the shaft from the suction end of the compressor, you'll notice four holes drilled through the main rotor. These vent holes allow the cavity on the opposite end of the rotor to also be at low suction pressure. Depending on the size of the compressor, there are either two, four, or six vent holes drilled through the main rotor. The main rotor rotates on the shaft, typically at 3600 revolutions per minute, yet with some models at half speed, or 1800 RPM. Two Stargate rotors intermesh with the main rotor. The Stargate rotors are identical in shape and are positioned opposite of each other across the diameter of the main rotor. While the main rotor rotates, the Stargate rotors go along for the ride. As a tooth of the gate rotor intermeshes with the flute of the main rotor, the tooth serves to close the gate, trapping the gas in the flute. As the tooth travels through the flute, the trapped gas is compressed to a smaller volume and higher pressure. With six total flutes, three flutes are engaged in compression on the top half of the compressor, and the opposing three flutes are simultaneously engaged in compression on the bottom half of the compressor. The gate rotor on the opposite side is oriented identically to the gate rotor on the near side, just flipped over. The gas that enters the flutes on the top half of the compressor is compressed by the gate rotor on the near side, and the gas that enters the flutes on the bottom half of the compressor is compressed by the opposing gate rotor on the far side. A casing wrapped around the main rotor encloses and traps the gas in the flutes. In this case, we show a fixed port casing with a fixed triangular shaped discharge port. High pressure compressed gas is discharged from the casing's triangular ports out the side of the compressor. The blue cloud at the right end of the main rotor represents the low pressure of suction gas. The vent holes drilled through the main rotor allow the same low pressure condition to exist in the cavity at the left end of the main rotor. The pressure of the suction gas exerts a force in an axial direction on the main rotor. But since suction pressure resides at both ends of the main rotor, the axial forces cancel, resulting in a zero net axial force on the main rotor of the compressor. Rotating the compressor to an axial view, we see that the compressed gas is discharged simultaneously from two opposing discharge ports out opposite sides of the compressor. The radial forces exerted on the top of the compressor are identical and opposed to the radial forces exerted on the bottom of the compressor. Thus, the radial forces cancel. Both axial and radial forces are canceled. The only net force on the main rotor of the single screw compressor is gravity. 
The low bearing loads result in extremely long compressor life and very high reliability. The Vilter Single Screw Compressor is the only industrial refrigeration screw compressor offered with a standard 15 year bearing warranty. Now let's look at capacity and volume control. A fixed port casing wrapped around the main rotor would be similar to the casing of an air compressor where a fixed volume of gas is trapped, compressed, and discharged out of the fixed port. Here we see a Chicago Pneumatics fixed port air compressor with a split casing. Looking at the suction end of the air compressor with the top half of the casing lifted, notice the triangular shaped discharge port in the casing through which the compressed gas is discharged. The Vilter single screw compressor does not have a fixed port casing. Rather, a portion of the casing is removed from both sides of the single screw's frame. The portions of the frame that were removed are replaced with two bars of steel, or slide valves, on each side of the compressor. The patented Parallax slide valves retain the curved shape of the casing they replaced. Looking at the casing of a Vilter single screw compressor, notice the voids in the frame that accommodate the parallel slide valves. The slide valves are supported by carriage assemblies, which are mounted in the compressor's frame. Each slide valve is able to move or slide in the direction of the axis of the main rotor. The position of the right edge of the capacity slide valves, shown in yellow, determines the amount of gas that is trapped and compressed. The infinitely variable capacity slide valves are capable of modulating from full load when positioned to the right to 10% of full load when positioned to the left. The position of the left edge of the volume ratio slide valves, shown in green, determines the pressure or volume at which the gas is released from the compressor. The volume slide valve enables infinitely variable volume ratio control from a low 1.2 VI when positioned to the right to as high as 7.0 VI when positioned to the left, the broadest volume ratio range in the industry. The parallel slide valves are interlinked so that the position of the capacity slide valve on one side of the compressor is identical to the position of the capacity slide valve on the opposite side of the compressor. Likewise, the position of the volume ratio slide valves is identical on both sides of the compressor. Thus, the parallax slide valve design maintains the balanced forces around the main rotor of the compressor. The capacity and volume ratio slide valves are positioned in parallel to each other, not in series. With the single screws slide valves, there are no slide stops or mechanical limitations to restrict their functionality. Both slide valves are able to modulate within their full range of travel simultaneously. Thus, the Vilter single screw is the only industrial screw compressor capable of operating at optimized efficiency through its full capacity 